Friday, June 21st at the Aon New Zealand Open Champs Final Session, the New Zealand Swimming Alumni present The Legends Relay Live. The greats of the past back in the pool to help our next generation go for gold. Thanks to our sponsors, Northern Arena, Mirtha Pools, Galloway International, Hot Water Heat Pumps, Dougal Swimming, Speedo, Sanford Developments, Mount ITM, and Duncan Real Estate, Matamata Mita 10, Superior Shuttles, AJ Hackett Bungie, and McLeod's Cranes. The Legends Relay, live from the Aon New Zealand Open Champs, Friday, June 21st. Live coverage of this Swimming New Zealand event is proudly brought to you by Aon. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and to the viewers at home and welcome to day four final session of the 2019 Aon New Zealand Open Championships. I'd like you now to join me in welcoming the mixed 12 year old 6 by 50 metre freestyle mini club relay. We've got swimmers from United Swimming Club, Coast Swimming Club, North Shore Swimming Club and Phoenix Aquatics. Let's give them a big warm welcome everyone. And in lane three, we have United, four Coast Swimming Club, five North Shore Swimming Club, and six Phoenix Aquatics. We'll hand you over to the starters. And a little unsteady on the blocks there, but away they go. This is the Mini Club Relay, 12 year olds here. And a good start in the middle of the pool. This is Jasper Cornish from Coast Swimming Club. Got some good tempo there going. And uh, on the inside of him, lane three, is Charlie Lee from United. Gabrielle Doyle in lane five. Phoenix Aquatics has Brandon Holder out in lane six. And six lengths of the pool, the first of the changeovers. And. Uh, It'll be interesting to see how, how efficient they are on the change. It could come down to the wire. Nice straight arm technique there from United's Arabella Duncan. And a change of the lead there, lane five's Arthur Makaroff Patton is just on, right on target there with uh, Taylor O'Reilly from Coast Swimming Club. So approaching the halfway mark in this uh, mini club relay, 12 year olds here, um, which is a big privilege for them to be swimming uh, in front of their peers, in front of the swimmers that inspire them. And mums and dads probably in the audience, very proud indeed. Into the fourth 50. And in the pool now, if we're swimming in order, is Islay Boyles from United in three, Zoe Peterson from Coast and four, Dom Farepuri uh, from North Shore Swimming Club in five, and Jasmine Lyles in lane six from Phoenix. Two more lengths of the pool to go, and they come in, it's a pretty close one across three through five. A nice lead at the moment, lane five, North Shore swimming. This is Eilina uh, Bayo in lane four, Coast Swimming Club. This is Mia Stanley Hunt. And lane, lane three is Finn Locke from United. And the final length, a nice lead in lane five for North Shore. Not sure they're gonna catch this swimmer, but a battle on for second and third.
So North Shore looks to be sure to take out this mini club relay. Lane three is United, followed by Coast in four, and Phoenix Aquatics in six. Let's give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening ladies and gentlemen here at the National Aquatic Centre and watching at home. I'm privileged to be standing here for day four final session with a legend of New Zealand swimming and a good friend of mine, John Steele. John, great to have you here. Uh, Two-time Olympian, uh, a silver medalist at the Commonwealth Games and, and held the 100 metre freestyle record for a staggering 15 years. Uh, great to have you here. In terms of looking back over your career of 16 years in swimming, what, what are the sort of things, I guess, you, you think back and take into your life or remember? It's, it's basically gotten me where I am today, and um, it's a great way to travel the world for free. Awesome, mate. In terms of all those performances, those um, five Pan Pacific Championships, countless world champs, Commonwealth Games and Olympics, is there a performance that, I've asked Dean and a few others, but is there a performance that sticks out for you as one you're very, very proud of? Probably back in 92 when I was uh, 19 at Barcelona Olympics. I uh, took out my heat by uh, two or three seconds in the 200 freestyle in the morning and had a, had a massive sh shot of adrenaline I'm going to the third turn and just flew home, mate. I was uh, on fire that day. So it's just one of those swims that you remember you just had superhuman strength and managed to pull it off. That's awesome. Well, we, we're looking forward to commentating together tonight and uh, getting some really good uh, thoughts and insights from you. But we look ahead to the program this evening for day four finals. We start with the women's 200 metre freestyle multi-class, followed by the women's 200 metre freestyle. This could be the race of the meet, the race of the night perhaps. Erica Fairweather, Chelsea Edwards and Karina Doyle going head to head. Uh, for the national title and possible qualification, followed by the men's 200 metre individual medley multi-class, and then the men's 200 metre IM. Uh, Bradley Ashby, great performance this morning in the heats with a qualification two minutes low. The women's 100 butterfly multi-class follows that. Uh, Sophie Pascoe, what a swim this morning, uh, breaking a world record in that event, and we look to see whether she can do that again this evening. The women's 100 butterfly, Helena Gasson, uh, will be in form again tonight. The men's 50 metre backstroke uh, multi-class follows, followed by the men's 50 metre backstroke, a tight race there in the middle of the pool. Uh, the women's 50 backstroke multi-class. Uh, the men's, uh, sorry, the women's 50 backstroke, again, three swimmers, just 0.1 of a second there. Uh, then the men's 50 free multi-class, and then to finish the night, the exciting men's 50 metres freestyle, Pickett, Hunter, Maine, all going right through and then in the middle of the pool to try and get that title. It's going to be a great night, John. Look forward to commentating it with you. Oh, definitely, mate. I'm, I might have to have a coffee. Sounds like a big one. Let's get into it. Please join me in welcoming our officials for this evening's session. Our referees for this evening's finals, for the men's events, Diane Farmer. For the women's events, Ron Clark. Our starters for this evening's finals are, for the men's events, Greg Forsyth. And for the women's events, Ross Gillespie. The technical director for these championships is Leslie Huckins from Canterbury West Coast. Thank you officials, you can now be seated.
We will ne now hand over to the technical director and starters to get us underway with this evening's finals. Please join me in welcoming the first final of Day 4 Finals, Event 115, the Women's 200m Freestyle Multi-Class. In lane two from Selwyn Swim Club, Ella Ben. In lane three from Coast Swimming Club, Naya Wallace. In lane four from Orca Swimming Club, Jane Fox. In lane five from Zenith, Katie Short. In lane six from Cambridge Swimming Club, Melissa Donahue. Event number 115, this is the women's 200 metre freestyle multi-class. And looking at those classes and ages across the field, quite a spread of ages. Lane 2 and uh, 3, 15 years old. Melissa Donahue in 6 is 31. So uh, that's quite a range. And then Jane Fox, 19. Lane 5 is 24-year-old Katie Short. And as we've talked about earlier in the week, uh, each with different disability classes, in fact all different disability classes and as we've heard S1 through 10 is a physical disability, the lower the number uh, the greater the disability, so we have S9 for Ella Ben, S7 for Naya Wallace, um, S14 is a, a mental disability there with Jane Fox, S12 is a, um, a, a, a visual disability I guess uh, in sight. Um, and that goes, as Rebecca Dubber was telling me, from S11 through 13. S11 is completely blind and they wear blacked out goggles. So S12, some sight there for Katie Short. Lane 6, um, Melissa Donahue, S10. So each racing within their own class and the winner of the event is judged on the time the closest to the world record in this distance in their class. So it's a fair uh, playing field for them. Um, so don't be paying too much attention to where the swimmers are in the field. The, the board and the, uh, and the results at the end will show first to touch the wall and the order in which they touch the wall. And then uh, the program will work out who has won based on their class. So it all sounds pretty complicated. It used to take 15 minutes to determine who had won, it now takes a matter of seconds. So looking at the field at the moment, we have Jane Fox doing a great job in the middle of the pool, 2.45.20 was her seed time, and uh, looking for an improvement here for Jane in lane four. And Ella Ben um, doing a great job here in lane two, uh, looking for 2.33.95, so coming in, I think we're going to look to see an improvement in that uh, seed time there. She goes to the wall in 2.32.14. So great job to Ella Ben. And Jane Fox comes in. Never seen Jane Fox unhappy. Always got a big smile on her face. 2.42, which was a good time for her. And three swimmers uh, with about 20 metres to go. Naya Wallace in lane three. Katie Short in five. And 
we have Melissa Donahue in six. Nia Wallace coming in, and a good improvement there for her. Give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. So the winner of that event was Ella Ben, ladies and gentlemen. Ella Ben, uh, and we're going to get a quick word with Ella now. Hi, Ella. Congratulations on a national title. Another one for you. And 2.32.14, I looked at the seed time about a second off. Are you pleased with that performance? Yeah, I am. I was going hard from the start, and I was just trying to keep a good rhythm and a good strong stroke. And I I'm really happy with it. In terms of the four different 50s you swum there, was there one in particular that you put a lot of emphasis in or you needed to concentrate on more? Um, I think I went too hard in the first 50 and that was just kind of like the one that I just needed to keep a nice rhythm on and not go too hard out, but I did and, you know, it set me up right and I was just, whatever the race was, I was just happy with it. <laughs> Well, good on you. A great time and congratulations again. Thank you. The B final of event 23, the women's 200 metres freestyle. And in lane one from Taupo Swimming Club, Kira Allot. In lane two from Ashburn Swim Team, Bree Middleton. Lane three from Tide Swimming USA, Nikki Venema. In lane four from North Shore Swimming, Monique King. Lane five from St Peter's Western, Ella Ramsey. Lane six from Enterprise Swim Club, Tyler Finau. Lane 7 from Mount Monganui Swimming Club, Naya Anderson. And lane 8 from Parnell Swimming, Annabelle McLaren. Now John Steele joining me in the commentary. Looking forward to getting your comments tonight. But we were talking earlier about the, the difference between obviously the 100 and the 200 freestyle. Some calling it a long sprint. What, what do you make of that 200 free? What are people thinking and what, what are the tactics that one must take into a 200 free? Yeah, it's a bit of a mental game out there. Uh, there's a bit of pain after that 100 first 100 you're getting to the third lap and you're just trying to stay positive there in your head make sure you're giving yourself good affirmations now off they go into the final 75 meters of this turn of freestyle this is the b final and the swimmers ranging from two minutes seven through to two minutes 11 in this b final and john you are such a a talented 200 freestyler you had the 100 meter freestyle for 15 years but obviously had that endurance and back end and and, and, and the mental side of things to to hold it through for 200. yeah i was lucky sometimes depends on the year some some years i'd have a good 100 and then the next year i'd have a good 200. so uh it comes down to a bit of training probably i do remember that and in the latter years it certainly went down to the 100 and the 50 didn't it but here we go into the wall for the tournament meter freestyle B final and coming through to win that B final is Monique King.
in 204.86. Ella Ramsey, the visitor, in second. And Tyler Fineau, lane six, Enterprise Swimming Club, uh, rounds out the top three. Please join me in welcoming the A final of Event 23, the women's 200 metres freestyle. In lane one from North Shore Swimming Club, Ali Gallia. In lane two from Hillcrest Swim Club, Gina McCarthy. In lane three from Neptune Swim Club, Erica Fairweather. In lane four from North Shore Swimming Club, Karina Doyle. In lane five from Capital Swim Club, Chelsea Edwards. In lane six from Coast Swimming Club, Eve Thomas. In lane seven from Neptune Swim Club, Caitlin Deans. In lane eight from Capital Swim Club, Ruby Heath. The A final of the Event 23, the women's tournament meter freestyle. This is going to be a cracker, ladies and gentlemen. Karina Doyle, she was the, rec uh, the title holder from last year. She did a great heat time this morning of 2 minutes.11. Erica Fairweather in lane three, the 15 year old, 10 years her junior, with a time of 2 minutes 3.38, but's come off fantastic performances at the Aon Nags a few months ago. Chelsea Edwards in great form in lane five from Capital doing a 202 this morning. They go through Erica Fairweather going through first, Doyle in second, Edwards in third. Now, John, how important it will be these swimmers to keep their cool and keep to their game plan in the early stages? Yeah, I mean, it could be as simple just keeping your, uh, your rhythm going with your, your legs, legs in your arms, your bilateral breathing, um, trying not to look too much at who's who you're competing against sometimes that can play on you a little bit you just got to stick to your game and away we go through the hundred Karina Doyle and Erica Fairweather no surprises there starting to pop out the front and this is very much going to be a mental game these two swimmers will eye, the, eye themselves up in the final 75 meters Karina Doyle at 25 years of age Erica Fairweather at 15 the newcomer on the block which was such talent just seems to be getting better and better but Karina Doyle showing real talent this morning in the heats the intensity coming up John what's it coming down to in this mental game at the final bit mate it's looking pretty close out there we've got our girl in lane four she's got a good leg legs are going there she's gonna and, hold it mate and Erica Fairweather just starting to edge ahead now by half a body length this 15 year old's incredible, she just keeps getting better. Erica Fairweather, she goes in to win the 200 freestyle here at the Aon New Zealand Open Championships, 159.37. A New Zealand 15 year old age group record, a New Zealand title. And under the development qualifying time as well for the World Championships. Second place, Karina Doyle in a very good time too of two minutes point two. Chelsea Edwards in third. Give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen.
Congratulations, Erica. It's just a delight to interview each time because each time there's just something new you've done, you've broken, you've, you've qualified for. So first reaction from you on your win. I'm super stoked. I was wanting to go under two minutes, so I'm really glad it happened. Must be pretty cool to look up there and see a one at the front of the number. I can imagine that being pretty special. But a qualification, a New Zealand age group record and a national title, that's incredible. What, what do you, you know, that final 25, we saw you pull away. Um, the motor inside you must be so strong and something's happening down there in the deep south of New Zealand. You know, what is it, talk us through sort of what has got you to be able to pull away in that final 25? I mean, I guess it's just all the hard sets we do. I mean, it's totally worth it for this. Well, congratulations on another win, another qualification and another age group record. Give her a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. We move now to event number 16. Please welcome to the pool deck the men's 200 metres individual medley multi class. In lane one from Papakura Swimming Club, Joshua Wilma. In lane two from Selwyn Swim Club, Ian Edwards. In lane three from Selwyn Swim Club, Callan Edwards. In lane four from Fairfield Swimming Club, Jesse Reynolds. In lane five from Mount Eden Swimming, David Beck. In lane six from Blenheim Swimming Club, Jack Bugler. In lane seven from Wanaka Swimming Club, Hamish McLean. In lane eight from Napier Aquahawks, Lance Dusto. And away they go, the men's tournament meter individual medley multi-class starting with the butterfly. And I was talking about this with Rebecca Dubber, uh, a bronze medalist at the Paralympic Games Rio. And just how each of these swimmers has to master the technique with their disability. Now that's the thing. And Dean Kent, we were talking about too, is that um, all their disabilities are different. If it's a physical disability, they've got to master that technique. And in the 200 metre individual medley, they're doing it across four different strokes. So watching that now, and, and John, we were talking about your individual medley uh, prowess and lack of it, um, putting it down to your breaststroke leg. So why never breaststroke, John? I don't know, mate. There's, I'd always pull a hamstring or something if I try to do breaststroke. So I uh, just stuck to the butterfly and uh, freestyle and maybe a bit of backstroke if I was feeling funny. Now I think back, I never actually ever saw you do a length of breaststroke or backstroke, always a very, very talented butterflyer and freestyler as we head halfway through this 200 metre individual medley multi-class and a good start here in the middle of the field by Jesse Reynolds. In lane four, we've got David Beck in five, Callan Edwards in three. And here with the individual medley, uh, the breaststroke, the all-important length where they can get enough of a lead into the freestyle and tear away in the freestyle as others continue and finish their breaststroke leg. So hey Scott, let's hope no one pulls a hammy out there doing the breaststroke, mate. Yeah, yeah, nightmares. we're hoping, yep, exactly. No hamstrings being pulled here, hopefully, and they head into the third turn. 
and John Steele now you can probably comment on the freestyle legs so these people under a little bit of fatigue now when you're fatigued what are the things they need to be thinking about and make sure your head's not coming up too much <laughs> that's a good one too and trying not to I guess increase that turnover somewhat as, as you tire I always remember John Winter uh, seemed to turn up the turnover in the final 25 metres but here we go in for the final Jesse Reynolds let's give him a big round of applause ladies and gentlemen as he comes in for to touch the wall Jesse Reynolds 226 two second uh, in improvement on his seed time Callan Edwards goes into the wall second David Beck hits the wall third we'll soon see who has taken out this event So Callan Edwards unofficially qualified for the Para World Championships. Congratulations, Callan Edwards, lane three. Still letting it sink in as uh, Lance Dusto touches the wall and we look for the unofficial result and looking for the board will change in a matter of seconds to put up our winner. Jesse Reynolds takes it out, well done to Jesse, good improvement on the heats, we'll speak with Jesse very shortly but, uh, and also I think we'll get Callan Edwards up here as well, just for a chat about his qualifications, so Callan Edwards and Jesse Reynolds coming on over, well done Jesse, you've had a wonderful meet, Callan come over as well, get on this side of me, um, firstly on the title Jesse, congratulations, how was that one, two second improvement. Yeah, it was a hell of a lot better than this morning, which I'm really happy with. I uh, went for it in the morning and it wasn't, really wasn't what I wanted, so uh, to come back and better it by two tonight was awesome. Well, that's fantastic. Callan Edwards, um, still looks like it's sinking in for you, a qualification. You'll be off to London in September. How are you feeling about that one? <laughs> it, it feels really good. Uh, I wasn't entirely sure I was going to make it, considering a couple of other times I've been swimming this year, but it feels really good. Well, it's great. Another member on the team for, for the world. So congratulations to you both. Thanks. We now move to event 24, the B final of the men's 200 metres individual medley. B final of event 24, the men's 200 metres individual medley in lane one, Angus Kelleher from North Canterbury Swim Club, lane two, Shaquille Vautua from Howick Pakaranga, lane three, Zeke Pine from QE2 Swim Club, lane four, Thomas Hewson from Howick Pakaranga, lane five, Cameron Gray from North Shore Swimming Club, lane six, Andrew Rattray from Howick Pakaranga, lane seven, Louis Clark from Aqua Gym Swim Club and lane eight, Luke Mitchell from St Peter's Swimming Club. And just looking at the field, John, in lane five, a young 15-year-old Cameron Gray, a backstroke and butterfly specialist. 
I remember back in the day I was at Westlake Boys High School and you were never at school because at 15 you were breaking onto the scene. Is 15 years old with seeing Cameron Gray's right there in lane five. Yeah. Is this a sign of great things to come for him? Uh, look, he looks amazing. Yeah. At 15, you're hungry, uh, you're fearless, and uh, those are two two key, you know, attributes to an amazing swimmer. At 15, for you, you know, did did you feel you had that you had that mental side of the swim? Were you, you know, did you have it up there, or did that come later? It came a bit later. I was quite arrogant, I think, at 15. I got called arrogant a few times. Um, but it was, you've got to be humble in, in, in your ability and probably not come across too arrogant. Bit of a Muhammad Ali approach, was it? Perhaps in the early days, just sort of... Yeah, but we, we look to the race now, uh, third 50 in, they get to the end of the breaststroke uh, and they turn, and first it's Zeke Pine in three. Cameron Gray has slipped back to sixth. Uh, it is Shaquille uh, Vautua uh, in lane two, who is second at the moment. And that breaststroke leg for Cameron Gray really sent him backwards. And lane three, Zeke Pine coming in for the win of this B final. Two ten thirteen. looking at his entry time, 2.11, so a nice Im improvement there. Thomas Hewson comes in second, Louis Clark in third. Congratulations, guys. Please welcome to the pool deck the A finalist of the men's 200 metres individual medley. In lane one from North Canterbury Swim Club, Jeremy Tasker. In lane two from Kiwi West Aquatics, Luan Grobola. In lane three from Kodiak Kingfishers, Talon Lindquist. In lane four from North Shore Swimming Club, Bradley Ashby. In lane five from North Shore Swimming Club, Wilwick Kutsia. In lane six from North Shore Swimming Club, Jonathan Rutter. In lane seven from North Shore Swimming Club, Cullum Prime. In lane eight from Shanghai Swimming Team, Hai Chong. This is going to be a great final, ladies and gentlemen. The A final of the men's 200 metres individual medley here at the Aon New Zealand Open Championships. And Bradley Ashby already exerting some pressure on the field through the first 25. Now, there are four swimmers from North Shore Swimming Club through four and seven. Now, John, you're a big North Shore Swimming Club member for many, many years. How much of an advantage was it to have a stacked squad of fantastic swimmers through your time pretty cool pretty cool um it sort of you, you're training and your mates together but when it comes to uh when you line up for a race mate it's no hold bars and you go hard take no prisoners and i guess that certainly helped bring these swimmers through bradley ashby beautiful stroke there nice uh High, high turn over there, Bradley Ashby gets to the halfway mark, he turns first, he did a time of 2 minutes 01 this morning, qualifying in the FINA A time by point one. Ashby looking absolutely on fire here and the breaststroke leg, they go through 
and he'll be wanting to hang on. He's shown that throughout the meet so far that he's got the goods at the back end. But John, as they approach the end of the breaststroke, they know they've got the freestyle leg. What should these guys be thinking? What's going through their head? Get to that wall first. Pretty simple. So they hit the wall and they come out. Bradley Ashby, nice underwater work there. He's got two or three body lengths over the rest of the field. He's blown this field apart. Is Wilrit Kutsia. Jonathan Rudder on his outside. Wilrit Kutsia and Jonathan Rudder for second. And also it is Luan Grobelar in lane two. Who's going to come in for second? It's a blanket across there. Luan Grobelar comes in for second. Jonathan Rutter, Wilrick could see is shut out of the medals. And a 159.6 for the win. What a, what a race, guys. Congratulations. Good to see you here again, Bradley. Well done on a title. And uh, most importantly, I guess you've come back, you've got the title, but you've gone even faster. So the coaches must be absolutely stoked you've managed to come back faster at night. But uh, reaction to that performance? Uh, to go sub again is always nice. It's nice to come back and go faster again. Uh, it's uh, with the time, it's under the Olympic time. So in four weeks from now, Worlds, trying to go there again. Any idea? You've probably been studying the times, the different um, athletes around the world, the swimmers around the world. Um, how would that time sit you at the moment in the world? Uh, I haven't exactly looked at who's gone what. Uh, mainly just the fastest times in the world at the moment, with uh, like Mitch Larkin going a 155. So trying to get down there. Well, certainly going to put you in good stead for the World Championships in uh, in a month's time. And congratulations again. Great performance. Awesome. Thank you. We now move to event 17, the women's 100 metres butterfly multi class. And one swimmer in this field, and a very important swimmer, who did a world record this morning. Please welcome in lane four from QE2 Swim Club, Sophie Pascoe. So event 117, the women's 100 metres butterfly multi-class in the middle of the field is our world record holder, Sophie Pascoe. One minute 4.87 this morning. Just think that through, everyone. 104 with a S9 disability. 
And John, one of the challenges here today for Sophie is no other swimmers in the field at all. Yeah, that's right. And she's a beautiful young woman. She's got a beautiful stroke. Um, you, she's out there. She's just racing herself, basically. So coming off the wall, Sophie Pascoe, she's really going to have to just be on her game in terms of her processes, her game plan, would have walked it through with her coach. But let's make some noise for Sophie Pascoe, ladies and gentlemen. Let's bring her through to another world record. We're looking for a 104.87, 10 metres to go. Can she get there? She'll hear us. Wow, yep, 102.48, awesome. 102, a world record by 2.4 seconds, that is phenomenal, yeah, she's that is awesome. incredible, John what do you make of that? So cool, so cool to see, she's, she's stoked man, that's so cool. The hand over the mouth, I don't think Sophie can even believe how far she went. Now, to beat the world mark by 2.4 seconds is unheard of. Wow, Sophie, put it there. A world record by that margin, a lifetime best. You just keep getting faster. It must be this pool. Um, last time I set the world record was uh, three years ago in this pool, so it's nice to be able to set it again back in the hometown. That game of swimming in a pool on your own in the middle lanes clearly had no negative effect on you. Um, so maybe you need to swim every race with no one else there. Look, every swimmer can justify that we all race against the clock, so uh, that's exactly what I did tonight. You know, I was given the race plan by Rolly to go out and then hold on, and uh, that's exactly what I did, and the time proved that. So you do the fastest time you've ever done, a 102, break the world record by 2.4 seconds. Um, where can you go from there? Well, yeah, I've got to do it in three months' time again at Worlds. So, uh, you know, that's the exciting thing about swimming. And the fact that I'm doing PBs now, again, you know, three years later, is a really exciting. And obviously our training block's paying off, and we've got another training block coming up, leading into Worlds, and then obviously Tokyo. Well, very inspirational for everyone here at home and in the pool. Congratulations. The next event on the programme is the B final of Event 25, the Women's 100 Metres Butterfly. In lane one from United Swimming Club, Grace Bake. In lane two from Parnell is Nicole Lockie. Lane three from Capital Swim Club, Jenna Ralston Larking. In lane four from Neptune Swim Club, Jessica Scott. Lane five from Tide Swimming USA, Nikki Venema. In lane six from Pukekohe Swim Club, Caitlin Steedman. Lane seven from Aquablades New Plymouth Swimming, Sasha Reed. And lane eight from Mount Monganui Swimming Club, Naya Anderson. They go to the wall through the first 50. It's Jessica Scott. And uh, 
John, we've talked about that easy speed in that first 50. Tell, tell the people at home or people here, what does easy speed mean? Easy speed? <laughs> well, maybe I should tell you. You know, yeah, you you know what me. easy speed is. When I swim, I look like I'm swimming easily speedy. Is that it? Yeah, it's kind of, I guess, going up the first lap, don't putting too much in, not getting nice flow, leaving it for the last 10 metres, which is happening right now, to ensure that you've got the energy to bring it home. And in we go, lane four is Jessica Scott that takes it out. 103.33. Well done to those women in that B final. And I'd like you now to welcome the A finalist for Event 25, the Women's 100 Metres Butterfly. In lane one from North Shore Swimming, Tori Mateague. In lane two from Pukekohe Swimming, Kiana Swain. In lane three from Howick Pakaranga, Paige Shendelar Kemp. In lane four from Coast Swimming, Helena Gasson. In lane five from St Peter's Western, Olivia Collins. In lane six from Aqua Gym Swimming Club, Hannah Bates. In lane seven from Phoenix Aquatics, Vanessa Ovenhand. In lane eight from United Swimming Club, Alice Waldo. Away we go, Helena Gasson in the middle of the field, the 24-year-old, 59.9 this morning. What can we get out of her this evening? Can she get close to that 58.48? Now, Butterfly, a very technical stroke. John Steele had many national titles to your name. What's the key to the technique of this stroke? A uh, little good rhythm there, keeping your hips up high, uh, driving off that second kick. Keep the rhythm going. Well, they've done that on the way through, and a good start there in lane seven. Vanessa Overhand takes them through, 27.87 for Overhand. Helena Gasson goes through second. This could be a good sign that she's saved a bit for the second lap. Helena Gasson in the middle of the pool, getting challenged in lane five by Olivia Collins, the visitor. Vanessa Overhand in lane seven, just fading a little bit. Helena Gasson coming through in four. Can she get under the minute again, under 59? She goes to the wall, one minute, 0.56. The visitor in second. Hannah Bates, second for the Kiwis. Vanessa Overhand, Overhand is in third for the Kiwis. Congratulations to all of those swimmers. Congratulations, Helena, on a national title. 59.9, just over the minute there. A win. You pulled away in the final uh, 20, 15 to 20 metres. But uh, tell us about how you feel now. Um, honestly, I feel like I could do another 100. I have not worked on any speed for the 100. I've been mainly focusing on 200 over the past year. So it's a good first 100 for a 200.
It, it was good, and I saw you hit the wall second at the turn, and I knew that maybe that was, um, you know, that, that you were going to come back strong. So it certainly looked like it from my perspective. So that's promising for your, your 200 distances coming up. Yeah, I am struggling a lot with my front end speed and my fly. I have been for the past three years. And, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to actually getting back into racing 200 fly, especially for next year. Well, good work, Elena. It's a title all the same. Congratulations. We move now to event 118, the men's 50 metres backstroke multi-class. In lane one from Coast Swimming Club, Jaden Mavold. In lane two from Whangarei Swim Club, Cameron Leslie. In lane three from Napier Aqua Hawks, Lance Dusto. In lane four from Mount Eden Swimming, David Beck. In lane five from Blenheim Swimming Club, Jack Bugler. In lane six from Geraldine Swimming Club, Benjamin Gould. And lane seven from Coast Swimming Club, Harry Randall. Away we go, the men's 50 metre backstroke multi-class and uh, John, you're a pretty useful backstroker in your day. How important is that start and what these swimmers need to do to get the best advantage off the start? Yeah, just continuing that momentum off the wall. Um, you know, there's, back in the day, mate, there's Johnny, the, John's, John Winter. He was an amazing underwater swimmer. Um, if you could swim the whole way underwater, he would win, mate. That's right, but 15 metres the maximum as David Beck comes in to finish in lane four. First to hit the wall, and we'll be looking at uh, Lance Dusto comes in, as does Jack Bugler. And Cam Leslie coming in there too, looking at Cam's time. He qualified. No, hoping for a qualification, perhaps. Qualified already. Cameron Leslie, lane 2, 42.80, so he's got a bit of time there. Harry Randall's come in, 42.28 for him, a, a good improvement there. So we look to the board for the first to third in the event once the classes have been taken into consideration.
Congratulations, Cam. Well done. Um, I always find that quite amusing. You said to me, was it me? Meaning, did I win because the calculation's been done? Another great win for you, and uh, under the seed time. Are you happy with that performance? Um, yeah, it's a season best time, and the fastest I've been since the Rio Paralympics, so uh, heading in the right direction, which is uh, really encouraging. That's awesome. In terms of uh, what you concentrate on that 50, not a lot of time to do it, but uh, is there things you've been working on to, to try and get that, that time down? Yeah, just uh, general conditioning as well as making sure I'm getting good rotation through the, through the stroke and making sure I'm making the most of every stroke. Me obviously not having much of a kick or any kick. Uh, what I do with my arms is really important, so making sure I'm getting the best purchase I can on the water and making sure you finish that stroke off and not cut it short. It's actually a really good thing, and I think a lot of people at home and probably here would like to understand is, um, you know, with your disability, um, you've obviously had to perfect the way to grab the water. Are you, is that a constant process, a continual process to, to learn how to do that better? Yeah, definitely. It's a lot of learning involved and a lot of uh, trial and error. I mean, the nature of my disability is you know, not everything you try first time around is going to work, so you just got to be patient and um, be open to try new things and Make sure you, like you say, perfect it and get as good, as good of a hold on the water as you can. Well, that's a really good insight. Thank you, Cam. Congratulations on another win and uh, enjoy your warm down. Please welcome to the pool deck. The A final of event 26, the men's 50 metres backstroke. In lane one from Faranui Swim Club, Taiko Torepi Ormsby. In lane two from Parnell Swimming, Jason Churches. In lane three from Mount Eden Swimming, Kane Follows. In lane four from Pukekohe Swimming Club, Andrew Jeffcoat. In lane four, sorry, it's the lane five, I should say, from Pukekohe Swimming Club, Zach Dell. In lane six from United Swimming Club, Jack Anderson. In lane seven from Shanghai Swimming Team, Da Luo. And lane eight from North Shore Swimming Club, Cameron Gray. So only point three separating lane four and five is where they come out from the underwater work. We talked about that. A blanket across the field. Splashes all across from lane one to eight. Great turn over there in lane four and five, I think, at the moment. Lane four, Andrew Jeffcoat from Pukekohe. Andrew Jeffcoat's got half a body length. Five metres to go. I think he's got this. He goes to the wall. 25.36 for Jeffcoat. A point three improvement, what a fantastic swim from Andrew Jeffcoat. And point one of a second off the New Zealand Open record. That, sorry, that over, over the New Zealand record. He was just off it. Daniel Bell holds that at 25.24. Taiko Torepi Ormsby breaking a new 15-year-old New Zealand age group record. Everyone give him a big round of applause. But the title holder from last year, it's a, a big margin underneath, 25.36. We'll hear from uh, Andrew Jeffcoat now. And uh, we might get a quick word with Taiko Torepi Ormsby as well on his New Zealand age group record.
So we'll get Andrew and Tycho. Andrew first, what a performance. One of the fastest. Tycho, don't go too far away. We'll get a quick word from you. Um, but Andrew, 0.1 of a second off the Open New Zealand record. Uh, PB for you and, uh, and the reaction to that win. I'm pretty stoked. Um, pretty good to be able to do it long course. Um, obviously, it would have been good to have the main brothers in there as well. Uh, but they have bigger things to focus on. Uh, i just like to thank my parents as well. Mum's over in the stands. Dad's at home watching and my coach Mitch and training partner Zach. Uh, good to get both the Pookie boys up there on the podium. Uh, I don't think that's ever been done. So it was awesome to see. Yeah, look, you had the lead from the halfway mark clearly and then just uh, pulled away and I think a quarter of a body length by the end, a very comfortable win. And as I said, uh, you know, a big improvement on your heat swim. Uh, so congratulations on an awesome win. Well done. Come in, Tycho. A quick word from Tycho. A new New Zealand age group record from the outside lanes. Um, obviously not in the middle lanes, but uh, you've got so many years ahead of you. How, how do you rate that performance? Uh, yeah, by far it was probably one of the best races that I've done. It was much better than Nags this year by over half a second, which I'm pretty happy with. Racing with the big boys, racing at the Opens, uh, different story to Nags, obviously. Um, does that bring out the best in you? Uh, yeah, it's always good to race whenever, as hard as I can whenever I can, especially at these big national meets. So I try to get all the, everything I can out with all the big kids. Good on you, Tycho. Well done on a, a New Zealand age group record. We now will uh, begin the first medal ceremony of this evening's session, brought to you by All Proof Industries. And I'd like you to welcome to in front of the medal ceremony podium, John Steele, two-time Olympian and Commonwealth Games silver medalist, held the 100 metre freestyle record for 15 years straight. Give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. We start with the medal ceremony for event 118, the men's, I beg your pardon, we start with event number 115, women's 200 metre freestyle multi-class. In the bronze medal position in a time of 3.14.74, Naya Wallace. In the silver medal position from Orca Swimming Club in 2.42.57, Jane Fox. And the gold medalist from Selwyn Swim Club in 232.14, Ella Ben. We move now to the medal ceremony for event 23, the women's 200 metres freestyle. In third place in a time of 2 minutes 2.07 from Capital Swim Club, Chelsea Edwards. And the silver medalist in a time of two minutes, 0.27 from North Shore Swimming, Karina Doyle. And winning in a new New Zealand 15-year-old age group record, Fina A qualify, well, qualifying time development, 
in 159.37, Erica Fairweather. The next uh, medal ceremony is for event 24. The men's 200 metres individual medley multi-class. In the bronze medal position in 257.81, Hamish McLean. In the silver medal position in 235.34, from Selwyn Swimming Club, Callan Edwards. And the gold medalist winning in a time of 226.45, Jesse Reynolds. And well done to Callan Edwards qualifying for the Para World Championships in London. The next uh, medal ceremony event 24, the men's 200 metres individual medley. In the bronze medal position in two minutes, 3.13 from North Shore Swimming, Jonathan Rutter. In second place in the silver medal from Kiwi West Aquatics in 2.02.69, Luan Grobola. And the winner in the gold medal in another qualifi uh, qualifying time of 159.6 from North Shore, Bradley Ashby. We now move to event 117 medal ceremony for the women's 100 metres butterfly multi-class. And let's put our hands together for the world record holder in the 100 butterfly multi-class from QE2 Swim Club, Sophie Pascoe. The next medal ceremony, event 25, the women's 100 metres butterfly. In bronze medal position in 101.46, Vanessa Ovenhand. In the silver medal position in 101.38, Hannah Bates. The visitor silver medal in 101.38, sorry, is Olivia Collins. Well done, Olivia. And the gold medalist and winner in one minute, 0.56, from Coast Swimming Club, Helena Gasson.
Move now to event 118 medal ceremony for the men's 50 metres backstroke multi-class. In the bronze medal position from Coast Swimming Club is uh, Harry Randall. The silver medalist in 32-1-2 from Mount Eden Swimming, David Beck. And the winner from Whangarei Swimming Club in 42-21, Kim Leslie. The next medal ceremony is event 26, the men's 50 metres backstroke. In third place from Pukekohe Swimming Club in the bronze medal position, Zach Dell. 25.92. The silver medalist from Mount Eden swimming in 25.78. Kane follows. And the gold medalist in a time of 25.36. Andrew Jeffcoat. Well done to those medalists and if we could just ask John Steele just to remain where he is and uh, we'd like to present John Steele, New Zealand swimmer number 155 for first representing New Zealand at the 1990 Commonwealth Games here in Auckland presented by his swim mate Nick Tung. Let's give John a big round of applause Well, Nick's going to shake his hand. Nick Tung and John Steele, the powerhouse of sprinting in the 90s. And we also have another special award. For Gabby Farmasili, she's out there as well. Swimmer number 252 for representing New Zealand at the 2017 Budapest World Champs. Pretty special, these getting certificates for their numbered, the number athlete, for their representing at World Champs, Com Games or at Olympics. Well done to John Steele and Gabrielle Famasili. We're now back to the program of racing, ladies and gentlemen, so get ready. We're up to event number 119, the women's 50 metres backstroke multi-class. In lane one, sorry lane two, we have uh, Naya Wallace from Coast Swimming Club. In lane three from Topor Swimming Club, Shaborn Thierry.
We'll start that again in lane two from Coast Swimming Club, Naya Wallace. In lane two from Topo Swimming Club, Chaborn Terry. In lane four from Selwyn Swim Club, Ella Ben. In lane five from Orca Swimming Club, Jane Fox. In lane six from Zenith, Katie Short. So Ella Ben in lane four has had a fantastic meet so far. A couple of uh, wins to her name and a lot of familiar names here. So a full program for these para-athletes uh, in those classes there. Uh, Jane, S, uh, Jane Fox S14, uh, the mental disability and then the physical disabilities of S1 through S10. S12 is the sight disability. And so away they go down the length. Ella Ben looking strong with a half body length lead over Jane Fox as they come to the wall in this 50 metres backstroke. And that was a close one to the wall. We'll look to see what the computer spits out for the, the overall winner. But each of these athletes looking for a PB this evening. Ella Ben winning another title, and we'll get a word for Ella. Hello again, Ella. A full program for you. It must be quite a challenge to warm down and reset your mind and get into the next one. How, how do you sort of mentally prepare and sort of decompress from the last one and get ready for the next one? Uh, I just think about all the things that I want to work on and I just try to motivate myself by thinking about like why I do it. You know, like all the hours spent in the pool and just, just really try to relax and just think about the next race. It's a really, really good response. And the other thing I was going to say, how many, how many um, events are you actually doing in this championship? Uh, I think it was about eight. Um, I just wanted to try and get as many events that I could down and just try to PB all of them. Well, you're doing a great job. Congratulations, Ella, on another title. Please welcome to the pool deck the B final of event 27, the women's 50 metres backstroke.
The B final, uh, this is Amy Pratt in uh, lane one, Grace Jones in two, Tyler Fanoe in three, Holly Isaac in four, Alice Waldo in five, Sophie Irving in six, Chloe Seaman in seven, and Sasha Reed in eight. Now John, in terms of turnover, should they be increasing that as they get closer to the wall? Uh, not necessarily, as long as they're grabbing the water and moving efficiently through the water, uh, that's the key brother. When they go to the wall, and the person that grabbed the water the best was Holly Isaac. And she gets there first in 30.5, sorry, 30.28. Please welcome to the pool deck the A finalist of event number 27, the women's 50 metres backstroke. In lane one from United Swimming Club, Kyla Alexander. In lane two from St Peter's Swimming Club, Paige Flynn. In lane three from North Shore Swimming Club, Gina Galloway. In lane four from United Swimming, Gabrielle Famasili. In lane five, from Hiratonga Sun Devils, Emma Godwin. In lane six, from QE2 Swim Club, Cassie Wright. In lane seven, from Slovakia, Karolina Hutchkova. In lane eight, from Parnell, Imogen Rogers. So this is the A final of the women's 50 metres backstroke, just one one hundredth of a second separating four and five and John, what's, what's it going to be down to the wire to get the win here? Mate, it only takes one one hundredth of a second between gold and silver. We'll see what happens. The touch, it's all going to come down to the touch. A good race out there in the lane seven by the visitor from Slovakia but they go to the wall. Gina Galloway gets it, 28.88. Gabrielle Fomasili in second, the visitor in third, Emma Godwin third for the Kiwis. Only 0.3 of a second, separating one to four. And a great win there by Gina Galloway out of lane three. Congratulations, Gina, on your title out of lane three. It was such a tight race, only hundreds of a second uh, separating almost three or four of you across the field. You know, that finish must have been just so important. Were you concentrating on the finish? Um, yeah, I think in a 50, it's important to execute the whole thing, so making sure those little details were good. So that was my goal going into it, and I was happy I could execute it. You've got some real speed at this meet. You must be really excited about the sort of speed, the sharpness you've got here. Yeah, I mean, I'm really happy with a PB in that event, so yeah, I can't complain. Well, congratulations, Gina. Well done. On the pool deck is event number 120, the men's 50 metres freestyle multi-class.
in lane one. From Whangarei Swim Club, Cameron Leslie. In lane two, from Taupo Swimming Club, Kuda Tafai. In lane three, from Selwyn Swim Club, Ian Edwards. In lane four, from Icebreaker Aquatics, Chris Arbuthnot. In lane five, from Blenheim Swimming Club, Jack Bugler. In lane six, from Napier Aqua Hawks, Lance Dusto. In lane seven, from Papakura Swimming Club, Joshua Wilma. In lane eight, from Coast Swimming Club, Harry Randall. Ranging from 13 years old in lane 8 to 29 years in lane 1. Cameron Leslie more than twice the age of Harry Rendell in lane 8. And away they go. Chris Arbuthnot looking strong in lane 4. He's had a great meet so far. A fantastic turnover here from Chris Arbuthnot. He's going through for a time of 26.96. Let's see what he can do. 26.45 for Chris Arbuthnot. It's an awesome time. We look out and check for the PBs on your program. And Cam Leslie finished almost exactly the same time as Harry on the other side of the pool. And Cameron Leslie, also a great time there. Harry doing 38-1 as well. Congratulations to you all. Give a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Watch the board everyone, waiting for the winner of this men's 50 freestyle multi-class. Great times by a lot of the swimmers in the field, they're just waiting around to see who has won. So Cameron Leslie, Cameron Leslie has won that, uh, but all the same, Chris, what a great swim, 26.4, coming, coming here. Well done, Cam, put it there, mate. Congratulations, uh, a great win from lane one, sneaking it on the outside, 38.4, so uh, how, how does that, uh, how does that, you know, sit with you? Yeah, pretty solid time, um, similar to the backstroke, um, yeah. Oh, I can't remember if it's the fastest since Rio I've been, but yeah, no, good time either way. I mean, to be going the same sort of times you did um, three years ago, um, getting a bit older, maybe it's the experience, the mental game, but uh, that's really encouraging, isn't it? Yeah, it is. A lot of it's been about managing the body and the mind, uh, getting this far through, and yeah, I'm not getting any younger, and uh, probably wouldn't say I'm like a fine wine. I'm not getting better with age, I don't think, but uh, I'm definitely hanging in there. Good attitude. Well done to Cam Leslie, ladies and gentlemen. On the pool deck is the B final of the men's 50 metres freestyle event number 28. They're about to get going.
In lane one, Atakura Julian. Lane two, Thomas Wilson. Three, Ollie Rayner. Four, Joshua Greening. Five, Christopher Elson. Six, Joshua Brown. Seven, Dan Cordwell. And eight, Sam McKenzie. A strong start, Dan Cordwell in lane seven, but it's the middle of the pool. Lane four, Josh Greening's going to go in. Looking for a time of 23.51. He hits the wall at 23.29. And some good times there in the B final. The splash and dash. Please welcome onto the pool deck, and they're on there now, the A final of the men's 50 metres freestyle. In lane one. From Howick Pakaranga, Bailey Main. In lane two, from Hawera Swimming Club, Carter Swift. In lane two, from Howick Pakaranga, Corey Main. In lane four, from North Shore Swimming Club, Michael Pickett. In lane five, from Howick Pakaranga, Daniel Hunter. In lane six, from Philippine Swimming, Luke Gibby. In lane seven, from Howick Pakaranga, Tyron Henry. In lane eight, from Hawaiian Swimming, Okai Lalekis. The title holder and New Zealand record holder in lane five. The 16 year old champion in lane four, Michael Pickett. Pickett versus Hunter. Four and five. They're starting to come through. Pickett has the lead by a fingernail at the moment. Hunter's coming back. It's going to come down to the wall. Daniel Hunter. New New Zealand record for Daniel Hunter and a new New Zealand age group record for Michael Pickett. They've driven them through to the fastest times ever swum in New Zealand history. Ladies and gentlemen, you've witnessed history tonight. The fastest man this country has ever produced. And we'd like to hear from Daniel Hunter and Michael Pickett. We'll hear from Daniel Hunter first. And uh, Michael, we'd like to have a quick word with you shortly. Congratulations to all the other finalists. So Daniel Hunter, we'll get a quick word with you first. Uh, congratulations. The f you're towering above me. You, you, you just look at the frame, a sprinter. You're the fastest man to ever swim for New Zealand over 50 metres. You got the New Zealand record. Uh, what's your reaction? Uh, definitely unexpected. Uh, it's always nice when you've got someone next to you that's pushing you along, especially being so young. It's a really exciting future for him, so it's good, but stoked. Pressure, uh, pressure before that event, uh, you know, with, with so many people uh, within points of a second apart, was there, is there anything in your game plan sort of going into that 50? I'll just use it, you know, like it's not often that you get to get to events like this where you're fully tapered, fully rested. Um, after the 200 the other night, obviously it gave me a bit of confidence for the meet, so 
just trying to use that to the best of your advantage and then take, make the most of it, yeah. Well, congratulations, a thrilling race. Uh, we'll have a quick word with Michael now, so come on, Michael. Yeah, just stay where you are or swap around. Now, Michael, congratulations. Been, uh, you know, the occasion, obviously, a massive uh, influence on your performance, but how do you feel? Oh, I'm pretty speechless, really. <laughs> Didn't really expect to go that time, but uh, pretty stoked to get under that development time as well. And in terms of uh, your coaching team, uh, you know, anyone you'd like to thank or, or, or your parents or anything? Yeah, just the Fano and uh, especially John Gatfield. My coach, he's done so much for me over the years, well, over the last year and a half, really, but uh, yeah, really grateful. Now, I was watching John Gatfield. He was so excited. He just about fell over the barrier and into the pool. So he's pretty happy, but uh, a new New Zealand age group record as well and two of the best performances we've ever seen in the 50 metres freestyle. Well done to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We now move and welcome the B final of event 29, the women's 200 metres breaststroke. In lane one from Capital Swim Club, Jenna Ralston Larking. In lane two from TBSS Central City Swimming, Lucy McKinnon. In lane three from North Shore Swimming, Maya Rasmussen. In lane four from Pirate Swim Team is Lucy Borlas. In lane five from Howick Pakaranga, Nikki Chapman. In lane six from United Swimming Club, Dasha Barbina. Lane 7 from Phoenix Aquatics, Rebecca Wilkins. And Lane 8 from North Wave Swim Club, Madeline Whittam. So way down the first length in Lane 5, this is Nikki Chapman from Howick Pakaranga. And John, with your extensive breaststroke career, um, getting some expert comments now as we head through the 75 metre mark. What should these be? Swim did you ever do a 200 metre breaststroke? No, nah, mate. I, I did 200 butterfly one time and that was a lot of pain. All I see out there is a little bit of pain. Sorry, well, I'm the wrong guy to ask. Yeah, well, 200 breaststroke, certainly some would compare it to uh, the 200 butterfly in terms of it leaving you completely spent at the end. It's one of those strokes where... There's more work being done in the, in the legs than there are in the arms. And uh, it's at the end of the pool, you'll often see a turn meter breaststroker that cannot get out of the pool because yep. they are completely spent on the legs. So the Biggest muscles in your body, lactic acid buildup. It's all just a bloody horror film, mate. <laughs> and we go down the 125 metre mark now, and these swimmers will be wanting to just ensure, you know, breaststroke probably more than some other strokes is technique you can really make hard work of breaststroke and, and uh, obviously that's what you did your whole career John made hard work of it um, and, and you didn't make hard work of, of freestyle and butterfly but these swimmers it's technique that's going to get them through it's technique that'll conserve their energy until they really need it at the end and here they come with about 30 metres left to swim and in the middle of the pool lane three and four Lucy Ballas and Nikki Chapman Lane three has Maya Rasmussen, the individual medley specialist. And John, just, they're going to be in pain right now. The last 15 metres, uh, it's eyeing up the wall really, isn't it? Yeah, the, the girls are doing well out here. It's going to be a pretty close finish. Top three there. So top three, second, two, second and third is going to be close. And they go to the wall. Lucy Ballas takes it out, 240-40. And uh, second goes to Nikki Chapman. Third goes to Maya Rasmus. A nice finish her, by her.
please now welcome to the pool deck the A final of event 29, the women's 200 metres breaststroke. In lane one from Capital Swim Club, Bronna Ryan. In lane two from Raumati Swimming Club, Leah Milner. In lane three from North Shore Swimming, Melissa Cowan. In lane four from Howick Pakaranga, Phoebe Harris. In lane five from United Swimming, Michaela Dance. In lane six from Northwave, Kiara Smith. In lane seven from Jazzy Swim Club, Lucy Gordon. In lane eight from Kiwi, Madison Wills. Two seconds separating the middle five lanes as they head into the water. The all-important pull-out and uh, pretty flat across the field as they head away. And Kiara Smith already with that very, very high turnover, uh, high, high recovery and turnover as she heads away into the lead down the first lap. Now, who knows? She may have been holding back in the heats uh, in this early stage of this 200-metre breaststroke. She's away very, very quickly. They go to the wall and it is Kara Smith who goes through 33-43. She's well ahead of the rest of the field. She has a second and a half at the moment. And the other woman in the field, Phoebe Harrison for Michaela Dance, Melissa Cowan, got some work to do to catch up. She was the title holder in 2018 and 234.08. So she's certainly got that sort of time in her this evening, we hope. So it's a blanket across second uh, at the moment. We've got lane four and three, Melissa Cowan, Phoebe Harris, and in lane two, Leah Milner, Milner who had a fantastic Aon National Age Group Championships, won winning many, many titles. So Leah Milner, the 15-year-old from Raumati, is holding in. She's looking good. Could the 15-year-old start to wind it up here and surprise us all? Kara Smith is still holding the lead. Lane four, Phoebe Harris is looking good at the moment. We look for the final wall and it's gonna come down to how much work that's gone in in training. Who's done the work? Who's got the grit? Who's got the mental toughness in the, two, the top two inches? Kiara Smith looking very strong at the moment. It's hers to lose. Leah Milner, the 15-year-old in lane two. Phoebe Harrison, four. Michaela Dance from United in lane five. Phoebe Harris coming into second. North Shore's Melissa Cowan. Kiara Smith. Kiara Smith is coming in. Looking at the clock, 2.30, 2.31. 232, 232.92, a new New Zealand age group record for Kira Smith and another title to her name. And Leah Milner coming in fourth, Melissa Cowan comes in in second. Wow, Melissa Cowan sneaks through for second out of lane three. What a storm to home. And Phoebe Harris rounds out the top three.
Congratulations, Kira. You look like you just had that complete control from lane six the whole time. Um, this morning, 2.38, uh, is it safe to say you were just holding a few things back this morning? Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> it's just 200, it's like, it's a smart race and you have to race it smart. So. Well, a new New Zealand age group record, clearly a PB for you. Um, talk us through that event. Talk us through the four laps and sort of what the game plan was and did it all, it obviously turned out for you. Um, well, I definitely tried to take it out hard. Basically, I was just trying to hold that. So it was just painful. <laughs> painful, but you obviously held the technique together, you held your head together and you got there. So congratulations on an awesome title. Move now to the final of event 30, the men's 4x200 metre freestyle relay. In lane 3, the Pukekohe Swimming Club A team. In lane 4, the North Shore Swimming Club A team. In lane 5, the Capital Swim Club A team. The 4x200 metre freestyle relay for men, lane 3, Pukekohe, 4, North Shore and 5, Capital. The first swimmers off in 3 is Andrew Jeffcoat, lane 4, Jonathan Rutter and Thomas Wilson. Now, John Steele, you've had so much experience in relays. You've won your medals at the Commonwealth Games in relays. How, how does the dynamic change when you're swimming in a relay versus uh, swimming on your own? Yeah, it's uh, less pressure on yourself and it, you... You're in a, a team environment, it's not about, there's no I in team. So yeah, you gotta make sure you do a good job for the boys. But I'm just noticing, you'll look at the first uh, leg, the guys that are doing the first leg, and uh, the guys that are doing, bringing up the rear with the, um, the anchor, they're usually your best swimmers. So some of the guys in the middle there, they'll be, um, they'll be wanting to swim, swim their hearts out, maybe uh, lead off the relay next time. Yeah, so very strategic, isn't it, in uh, who goes first, who goes last. Some swimmers um, can actually perform better in relays than they do on their own. Is, you know, what, do you what do you think the reason is for that? Yeah, well, t for, for me it was like I, I was having to swim well for, the, uh, for my team, you know, for my country. Um, and sometimes you can use the opportunity of leading off the relay to qualify for an event, um, you know, and that's a good point actually John, a lot of swimmers have used, uh, and for the people at home that might not, might not be familiar, that you can use the time off the first swimmer because you're off the gun and you touch the wall, but any other swimmers in the relay are leaving before, uh, well they're, 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 they're starting their sway off the blocks before the swimmer touches the wall, and you'll see that here, and some people do it better than others, and away we go, yeah. lane four is leading at the moment, and that is... Uh, the North Shore team and lane two is Pukekohe three capital. But talking about the turns, John, that is a huge part at the top end of international relay of getting that uh, that, that changeover right, isn't it? Because you're too oh, yeah, early, definitely. you're going to lose the whole thing. Yeah. You're too slow, you're going to lose it you're anyway. Too cute. So um, no, I used to spend a bit of time doing that, and uh, it was it was a it was a challenge to see who could do the best turnover, changeover, so should I say. And would it, would it be safe to say that you changed over with the person that was swimming in? So you got used to knowing who was swimming in, so you could, you could know exactly how to react off the block. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was also, you know, make sure you swam well. Uh, you're, you were looking at coming into the wall well and not slowing down, keeping your momentum going into the wall because you've got to make sure you've got to get your other swimmer off in a good time. 
So we're into the second hundred of the second swimmer here and a good lead uh, by Callum Prime. Uh, lane three here is Nathan Hickbot, Atakula Julian from uh, Capital Swim Club in lane five. And still early stages in this 4 by 200 metre men's freestyle relay as they go to the final 50 for these swimmers. And as you say, the middle two swimmers are very important because they set the final swimmer up. And uh, I'm sure you've been anchoring a couple of relays, John, where you might be behind and you've got some serious ground to make up. Real mental game, isn't it, then? Yeah, definitely. You're getting used behind the block there. You're, you know, you're going through what your thought process, what you want to do during the race. Um, and you, you're hoping that the, there isn't too much, too much room between you if, if someone's in front of you. But chase them down, man. Chase that rabbit. So into the pool now, Bradley Ashby, the champion from this evening, the qualifier. Zach Dell from Pukekohe in three. Phoenix Douglas uh, for the Capital Swim Club in lane five. So essentially Auckland, Wellington, and, uh, well, we'll call it North Auckland, South Auckland, and Wellington as they head down the first 50, these third swimmers. And very much a team effort, this one. I mean, the person touches the wall and sure, that final swimmer has got to understand that the pressure's on their shoulders, but they didn't get in that position without the hand of the three swimmers that swum prior. And Bradley Ashby, a big frame on the, on the chap and uh, beautiful technique as well. Nice even symmetry in this freestyle. And John, talking about some of those best relays, um, your silver medal at the Commonwealth Games. Talk us through what games that was. Who else was in the team? <laughs> it was a long time again, mate. Uh, 94 in Canada, I believe. Yep. In Canada, Victoria? Yeah. And pretty, who else was in sure the team? Don't tell me you have forgotten who was in your team. Yeah, I have. I have. Uh, pretty sure Nick Tung was in that team. Nick Tung? Yeah, who, who presented me uh, tonight. And probably Trent, I would presume. Yeah, I'm sure Trent Bray was there too. And maybe I'm just trying to think who else it would have been. But uh, a fantastic performance. Did the Aussies win that one? Yeah, they might have. They might have, mate. So here we go for the final. Let's check the turnover out. And some of these swimmers standing at the back of the blocks, almost like a running start, very much a change from the 90s and 2000s of John's year, that these swimmers are taking a running start. Now... That really does have to be practiced. You get a running start and your feet have left the block before your swimmer touches, then the curtains come down on your relay. Yeah, mate. Uh, the Amer I found the Americans are really good at their changeovers. Um, I studied over in, in LA, USC, and uh, we spent a lot of time, the sprinters spent a lot of time on changeovers, starts, and turns. And uh, when you're swimming in a 25-yard meter pool, sorry, 25-yard pool, um, you're doing a lot of change. A lot of turning, tumble turning. So you get I'd pretty good at it. Yeah, look, I'd imagine that the, the, relay sw uh, the relay squads that do put the emphasis on the turns, the changeovers, um, uh, have got a huge advantage. Yeah, it looks like North Shore's out here in lane number four. They're dominating this last leg here. And in lane four for North Shore, this is Samuel Potching. Thomas Watkins in uh, five for Capital. Blake Elliott and three for Pukekohe. And as uh, uh, Gary Hall Jr. would say, I wonder who's going to be smashing the guitars tonight <laughs> for the 4 by 200 meter free. So was it, which one was that one? I think he was telling the Australians he was going to smash the guitars, or it was the Sydney Olympics, I think. And uh, Interesting individual, wasn't he? Yeah, I'm not sure if you ever swum with him, but... I uh, wonder what he's up to these days. <laughs> Maybe he's in a rock band. Him and his father. But as we come in to the finish of this 4 by 200 meter freestyle relay here at the Aon New Zealand Open Championships. 7... 30... What are we looking at? 739, 738.69. Second place going to Capital. And Pukekohe will come in third.
Well done to the men. Give them a big round of applause. They've put it all out there. Breathing hard. We're going to move now to event 31, the women's 4x200 metre freestyle relay. They're coming out onto the pool deck now. In lane three is the St. Paul's Swimming Club A team. In lane four is the North Shore Swimming Club A team. In lane five is the Capital Swim Club A team. In lane six is the Aquablades New Plymouth Swimming A team. The last event on this evening's final session and the women's 4 by 200 meter freestyle relay. Starting off for St Paul's is Laura Littlejohn who had an amazing Aon National Age Group Championships. Monique King who's had an awesome uh, meet so far for North Shore in four. Chelsea Edwards, you've heard the name, she's winning all over the show and meddling and she's there for capital. In lane six, Aquablades New Plymouth swimming is Sasha Reed. So again, we go down the first 50. Uh, lane five is Capital, have gone down first with Chelsea Edwards. Settling into a new swimming club, Chelsea Edwards. And uh, had such a development and uh, had a, such an impact on her career, Frank Terrell down there in Wellington uh, and hoping the issues with the 9i swimming pool, which I'm not sure we're going to be resolved. Real challenges down there with the earthquake uh, issues with the building. So Wellington swimmers down a pool when they didn't really want to be. So hopefully the Hutt City Council will dig into their pockets strengthen that facility or in fact build a new one. Chelsea Edwards here at the first 200 metres in lane five. And John a nice lead here. Chelsea's giving them a body length over the rest of the field. Uh, this will be good for the second swimmers won't it? Yeah definitely. Pretty close here these first three swimmers coming to the wall. And into the changeovers again, and just looking there, very slow changeover for North Shore there. Uh, maybe playing it safe, being conservative, or just not a huge emphasis on practicing the changeovers, but we'll keep an eye on those as we go. And a nice start there in lane six, that is uh, Aaron Metcalf from Aquablades New Plymouth. But a big margin to make up Aquablades at the moment. Uh, Capital Swim Club with Ruby Heath goes out. Zoe Crawford for North Shore. Amelia Delatour in lane three for St Paul's Swimming Club. So thinking back, John, to your 1990 Commonwealth Games debut in the uh, Waitakere Aquatic Centre out there in Henderson, must have been a special moment, just trying to calculate how old you were back then, 15 years old? Uh, 17. 17 at the 1990 Commonwealth Games. You had a young Daniel Loader there too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of the names, uh, Paul Kingsman, Anthony Moss, um, there were some giants as far as in the swimming world were concerned at the time. 
those guys were all sort of coming to the end of their career and I was a young guy coming through. Um, you know, I looked upon those guys for a lot of experience. And, and another couple of great people. Uh, Honey uh, was there, John Munro. Um, another good man, uh, Tim Bowen, also at the 1990. He may be listening at home, a mountain of a man and yeah. a good turn of backstroker. He's got a massive uh, silver fern on his chest. He does indeed. He does indeed. Uh, I could talk all day about Tim Bowen, but we're all coming back to the 4 by 200 metre freestyle relay for women here at the Aon New Zealand Open Championships. And they come into the change, looking at the changeovers. And lining up for North Shore is Andy Quirk. And in lane three, this is uh, Peyton Tofiano. Looks like Capital's increasing their lead there. Come on, North Shore. Yeah, this is a good lead here. Uh, John Steele showing his North Shore colours. And John, looking at your career of clubs, I, I do remember um, you said you even it came out of your mouth. There was some arrogance you thought at 17. I certainly was in awe of you when I was there. I was a little whippersnapper. You were the, the Kings. You and uh, there was a few others there. Uh, Nick Sanders, uh, Malcolm McGregor, all of these names. But... Yeah. We've had some good races over the top, over the years, uh, Scott. Yeah, yeah, probably in the latter years. But look, talking about the clubs, you went from North Shore. You then went over to uh, West Auckland Aquatics, didn't that's, you? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you got it, brother. Ross Anderson, obviously Ross Anderson, senior taking the reins and then the club came back Ross Anderson came back to North Shore swimming didn't he and uh, brought the whole club back with him yeah a lot of the swimmers would follow coaches um, and if, if a couple of the boys went you'd, be, you'd, you'd have to go follow, follow behind I'd say stay with your friends we head back to the racing and a little bit of a closing margin here I think uh, North Shore Andy Quirk uh, is starting to close the gap here on Jenna Ralston Larking. So, um, yeah, she heard my this comment. This is a good leg here by uh, Andy Quirk. Let's go, sure. So, come on, John. There's meant to be an unbiased view here on the commentary desk. You're really starting to push for North Shore here. Uh, Wellington versus Auckland uh, versus in lane three we have uh, St Paul's and into our final swimmers now Bronner Ryan for Capital Karina Doyle for North Shore so the second fastest two hundred metre freestyler as of this evening Karina Doyle two minutes point two this is going to be close Looking back to the times of Bron Ryan and the 200 metre freestyle, is the margin going to be too great for Karina Doyle to chase? I think, I think she's chasing pretty hard. It's looking pretty good. Certainly a bit of an incentive to get there. The team is relying on her to give her a best possible for performance. Karina Doyle is anchoring for North Shore. The pressure on Bron Ryan for Capital Swim Club. Who's Teammates. supporting Capital? Come on, Capital, let's hear it. Look what's going on here. Karina Doyle has caught Bron Ryan. Karina Doyle, half a body length. What a swim here for her. She's making it look easy. Look at that beautiful technique. Karina Doyle takes charge for North Shore. There's no question who third's going to be. To be honest, there's no question who second's going to be. I think the race has been sewn up. I can't see Karina Doyle fading in the final 50. The 4x200 metre freestyle relay for women here at the Aon New Zealand Open Championships, the final event of day four finals. And what a night it's been. And Karina Doyle, let's give her a big warm welcome into the finish line, ladies and gentlemen. And her teammates ready 
We've done a great job to set her up too. She cruises into the wall in 8.01. Sorry, 8.30.51, I should say. 8.30.51, a margin of six and a half seconds over second place. Bronner Ryan coming in second. Sarah Miller for St Paul Swimming coming in third. And Lucy North. Let's give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. The 4x200 metre women's freestyle relay. Thank you to the technical officials of this evening's session. We now ask the officials to make their way from pool deck. Please show your appreciation for our volunteers. We're going to move now to the second of the medal ceremonies and please give a warm welcome to the legend of open water swimming who has done so many straights. He can't do any more straights. He's done the triple straights, the double straights. He's got the cook straight records all over the show. Give a big warm welcome to Philip Rush, everyone. Please welcome to the pool deck in the first medal ceremony, event number 119, the women's 50 metres backstroke multi-class. The bronze medalist in 49.79 is Naya Wallace from Coast Swimming Club. In the silver medal position in 39.22, Jane Fox from Orca Swimming Club. And the gold medalist in a time of 38.74 from Selwyn Swim Club, Ella Ben. And Philip Rush, also a selector for Swimming New Zealand, and he's been watching the action throughout the evening and yesterday. We move now to the ceremony for event 27, the women's 50 metres backstroke. The bronze medalist in 29-2 from Hiratonga Sun Devils, Emma Godwin. The visitor bronze from Slovakia is Karolina Hachkova. The silver medalist in 29 flat from United is Gabrielle Famasili. And the gold medalist from North Shore Swimming in 28.88, Gina Galloway. And John Steele, thank you for coming along tonight. Thank you for commentating with me. It's been an honour, uh, and uh, it's always great to catch up. Thanks, thanks, Scott. It's a pleasure being here. It's a great facility we've got here on the North Shore. And uh, just talking to some of these athletes tonight when I was giving out the medals, uh, they were having a lot of fun out there, man, and that's what it's all about. That camaraderie, the friendship, and a uh, big, big smile on the faces. Good to see. 
Thank you, John. I'm sure we'll see you at some of the other championships and, um, and all the best with what's going on in your life and your family. We move now to event number 120, the men's 50 metres freestyle multi-class. In third place, the bronze medalist is Ian Edwards from Selwyn Swim Club in 30 minutes 27. In second place, in the silver medal position in 26.45 is Chris Arbuthnot. And winning in 38.14 from Whangarei Swimming Club, Cameron Leslie. We move now to event 28, the men's 50 metres freestyle. In third place in the bronze medalist in 22.63 from Howick Pakaranga, Corey Main. And boy, oh boy, has he aged in 30 minutes. Good on your horse. In the silver medal position. And a new New Zealand age group record for 16-year-olds in 22.34 from North Shore, Michael Pickett. And the winner, the gold medalist, in a new New Zealand record time of 22.27, the fastest man ever from New Zealand, Howick Pakaranga's Daniel Hunter. Horst, I feel a comeback coming on for you. A handy 50 butterfly, we'll see you in the pool tomorrow night. We move now to the event 29, the women's 200 metres breaststroke. In the bronze medal position from Howick Pakaranga, Phoebe Harris in 234.83. In the silver medal position from North Shore Swimming in 234.54, Melissa Cowan. And the winner of the gold medal in a new New Zealand 18-year-old age group record, Kiara, Kiara Smith. The next medal ceremony, event number 30, the men's, men's 4 by 200 metre freestyle relay. In third place is the Pukekohe Swim Club A, Andrew Jeffcoat, Nathan Hickmore, Zach Dell and Blake Elliott.
The silver medalist is the capital Sumtabe, Thomas Wilson, Atakura Julian, Phoenix Douglas and Thomas Watkins. Presented by the legend of open water swimming, Philip Rush. And New Zealand's selector as well. And the gold medal is North Shore Swimming Club A, Jonathan Rutter, Callum Prime, Bradley Ashby and Samuel Potching. And we move to the final medal ceremony, the women's 4x200 metre freestyle relay. And the bronze medalist is St Paul's Swimming Club A, Laura Littlejohn, Amelia Della Tour, Peyton Tafiano, and Sarah Miller. The silver medals go to Capital Swim Club A, Chelsea Edwards, Ruby Heath, Jenna Ralston Larking, and Bronner Ryan. And the gold medalist from North Shore Swimming Club A, Monique King, Zoe Crawford, Andy Quirk and Karina Doyle. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you have enjoyed this evening's racing. Amazing performances by Erica Fairweather, Sophie Pascoe, Bradley Ashby, Michael Pickett, Daniel Hunter, and Kaylin Edwards uh, qualifying, but a new New Zealand Open record for Daniel Hunter in the 50 metres freestyle. Got to be one of the best performances this evening. We'll be back live tomorrow morning from 9.52 a.m. for the final day of the Aon New Zealand Open Championships. Thank you for watching and to our partners Aon, All Proof Industries, our line and team line. Live coverage of this Swimming New Zealand event is proudly brought to you by Aon.